Drop the knife. Drop it Drop it. A man gunned down by two LMPD officers. Right now at 11, Louisville's police chief on investigating those who use deadly force. Our officers are allowed to use whatever force is reasonable to protect themselves from bodily harm. The family left trying to understand why their loved one died. I want to know what happened, why, and you know, what's the reason for this? And the perspective a second body cam provides of the violent confrontation. Go back inside. Just go back inside. I need to check on her. Listen, just go inside. There's nobody in the corner. Go inside. It's a view seen by very few. Newly released body cam video shows what happened before and after Louisville police officers shot and killed a man. Good evening. Thanks for joining us tonight, everyone. I'm David Scott. And I'm Lindsay Allen in tonight for Adrian Flores. Investigators say the suspect came at them with two weapons. WDRB's Carl Mann is live tonight outside of LMPD headquarters with everything we know right now. Carl? Yeah, and we want to warn you right away about what you're going to see. Viewer discretion is advised with this body cam footage. Uh, this all took place just after 1.30 this morning. Three LMPD officers go out to a call of a domestic dispute. Now, this is just a portion of the body cam footage that was made public by LMPD this evening. LMPD officials said two of the three officers fired several shots hitting the black male suspect in his 50s multiple times. Officers on scene said the man came out of the apartment armed with a knife and a second weapon that they described as a large curved bladed object. In a news conference this afternoon, officials confirmed the suspect died at the scene. And officers called for an ambulance but did not, and I repeat, did not perform basic first aid. Police Chief Steve Conrad says a formal investigation is now underway. Essentially, I've got a question about the, the, the use of force and uh, that's something that we'll need to look at and understand when it was used and how it was used. I've got LMPD officials said Officer Bo Gadegard and Officer Taylor Banks are now on administrative leave, which that's standard procedure. Officer Brian Smith is being treated as a witness because he did not fire his gun. Now, the coroner is not releasing the name of the man that was shot and killed. However, the man's family is coming forward and going public with his identity. Joining me now, my colleague Josh Breslow. And Josh, I understand that you spoke to the brother of the man that was shot and killed. That's right. The brother says he does want answers. What he doesn't want to see is more violence and riots. I want to know what happened, why, and, you know, what's the reason for this, you know? Joe Brown has identified the man shot and killed as his brother, Darnell Thomas. He says the 57-year-old was a hard worker who had been honorably discharged from the Army and now ran a lawn service. Brown says he's not sure whether the officer's actions were justified, but he hopes to find that out eventually. He also says LMPD made the right move releasing the body cam video, but he does not want to see it for himself. Brown and the West Louisville Urban Coalition are asking for no additional violence as the investigation plays out. We don't need rioting or nothing. We just need to take care of ourselves, each other. Stop this. We don't need you to tear up the city or burn down the, the block or anything of that nature. All we want is justice for the Brown family. Neighbors and friends of the man shot say that he was hard of hearing. They're waiting to figure out if that could have played a role in this deadly shooting. Live in downtown Louisville, Josh Breslow, WDRB News. Uh, thank you, Josh. Now, two body cameras were rolling when officers responded to the call for help. And WDRB's Travis Ragsdale shows us another perspective of this fatal encounter. Well, we've already seen video from one officer who said he didn't fire his gun. This angle is from an officer who appears to fire multiple times. Around 30 seconds after the officer's camera starts rolling, he arrives at the scene. Drop, Drop the knife! Drop. 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 You can hear at least two officers telling the suspect to drop the knife. Drop this the officer knife. fires several shots. You can see multiple shell casings discharging from his gun. Several seconds pass and then... Do not move! Officers then kick what appears to be a handsaw away from the suspect. Then he's cuffed. After about 30 seconds, this officer and another enter the apartment and begin clearing. The camera becomes blurry. Clear here. Clear. Those two officers then exit the apartment. At this point, one of the three officers says his body camera wasn't turned on. Are you all right? Yeah, my camera wasn't on. You good? 
Yeah. I'm on. I'm hot. You good? You good? Yeah, I'm good. A minute or so passes in which the officer puts on gloves. He then tells neighbors to go back inside. Go inside. I need to check on her in the corner. Just go inside. There's nobody in the corner. Go inside. The officer then begins interacting with witnesses, telling them to stay back. We can't do anything, okay? We just have to, we have to leave everything how it is, okay? I'm sorry, okay? I will cut your lights off for you. Just give us some time, okay? Two more minutes go by, around seven minutes since the shooting now. Then this, as more officers arrive. I don't think we're allowed to talk about it, dude. I don't think. I don't know. It's around nine minutes after the shooting that EMTs arrive. This officer then explains what happened to another officer. The beeping you'll hear is from the body camera. We came up. Uh, Brian, was, Brian was talking to the, uh, I guess, victim. Uh, when we came up, we, Brian started to the door. Me and Bo came up. We drew our guns because I guess uh, Brian, Brian pulled his gun from so knife. Okay. He came outside with the, uh, came out the door, was holding the knife in his, in his, uh, in his hand. He started kind of swinging it around a little bit and kind of came at us and, and so we shot. The officer then puts on hand sanitizer. It happened fast, man. For the next eight minutes or so, this officer doesn't say or do much of anything. A little over 20 minutes after the shooting, he turns the camera off. Now you hear that officer refer to Brian and Bo. That would be officers Brian Smith and Bo Gadigard. That would mean this footage came from the camera of Officer Taylor Banks. Well, Travis, what about that third officer? Did his camera capture anything at all? Well, in the video, you hear that officer say he didn't have his camera on. Officers have to manually turn those cameras on. He did turn it on, but not until that apartment was being cleared, so it did not actually show the shooting happening. All right, thank you, Travis. Now, you can watch from the other officer's perspective right now on our website, WDRV.com. Again, the three officers involved in today's shooting were Taylor Banks, Brian Smith, and Bo Gadigard. They are all assigned to LMPD's second division. Officer Smith has been on the force the longest since March of 2008. Gadigard joined in June 2014, and Banks is the newest. He was hired by LMPD in June of last year. Officials say Banks and Gadigard were both fired their weapons. They have now been put on administrative leave, which is standard procedure. Smith will be treated as a witness. A Mayor Greg Fisher says today's shooting will impact many lives for many years. He tweeted shortly after LMPD's news conference this afternoon. He says anytime an officer uses deadly force and anytime one of our citizens loses their life in this way, it is a tragedy for all involved. Fisher goes on to say the video footage raises numerous questions. The investigation will answer those questions, and I ask the community to trust this process. There are still many unanswered questions tonight, and Chief Steve Conrad explained the, the department's official use of force policy, including when officers can draw their guns. You can watch that right now on our website, WDRB.com.